Super Super Sport wet paint. Big feet. I pull up and kill shit. Six feet. All right, six feet going deep. It's Nick Torres with Toast to the Terrestrial. All right, Toast to it. Why don't you tell us about what you do? All right, I do, uh, I do conscious hip hop. I make music for your mind. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, what does that mean, music for your mind? Music for your mind. You see, um, basically, I, I like to make music that makes people walk through a portal in uh -huh. a way. You know, like yeah, I heard that in your makes song. them yeah, it makes them open open their mind to different things that they would have never thought of before. Some sometimes, oh, yeah. Like some some people aren't really open to a lot of the things out there, and I like trying to like spread the knowledge that I found out in any way that I can. Honestly, oh yeah. Um, what's what's changed with you since the last time we did the interview? Um, since the last time I did the interview, I finished up my album and I'm, I'm ready for the launch this Thursday, actually, November 29th. I'm launching my first studio album, uh, Sagittarian Samurai. Mm, that's and why you got the sword? Yeah, yeah, that's why I got my sword for. It's my little, uh, problem solver right here. It's my, uh, chakra aligner for all the haters. <laughs> but yeah, my album, uh, right here is Sagittarian Samurai, 29th of November. Is that Godzilla on it? Yeah, there's uh, Godzilla on the cover. I got the, uh, if you want to show it close up to the, the camera real quick. I got Godzilla on there, and then I got the alien Sagittarian samurai myself stabbing Godzilla in the stomach. And if you see, Godzilla's actually got like gold teeth and a uh -huh. golden RX necklace, which is like Big Pharma. That stands for Big Pharma. So the album cover is sort of subliminal for me saying, fuck Big Pharma. Yeah. yeah and Big Pharma, for those who don't know, is like... Uh, Big brother that runs the pill industry and you know the industry of all the the legal drugs that be more dangerous than some of the shit that's not even legal. <laughs> like what what got you into um you know into that movement? Um, basically, what got me into that movement is I've lost a lot of uh, people important to myself, and I feel like a lot of people in the rap industry, especially, have lost a lot of important people that have very meaningful lives that had a lot more of a life to live due to drugs unfortunately and like the the different kind of drugs that this system's planted i mean back in the 70s and 80s there was like conspiracy of them planting crack in the in the system and stuff and planting crack in the hood making all this shit i mean now they're pretty much hustling bigger scale on on pharmaceuticals man they they're pushing xanax in the streets they got lean they got all these rappers promoting the drugs that are supposed to be not even like accessible unless you need them well, but right. there's rappers out there talking about sipping this shit in a styrofoam cup and shit for fun making all these people want to do it but what about since like that stuff was always because i you know xanax has been here since like for a while that's true that's true but i mean in a way they're they're glorifying it more than they ever really have i mean and then again there was like i mean eminem was talking about shit like that back in the day and stuff too but i feel like nowadays it's like every single artist bro. like we don't really have more Versatile. I mean, we have a bit of versatility, but I feel like almost everybody's talking about like Molly Percocet, Xanax, Lean, this and that. And I mean, that's not the kind of agenda we should be pushing to this this day and age because the kids are listening, man. The young, the, the youth is listening. I grew up. I smoked weed every day, but that's and I'm not gonna blame it on anybody specifically. But I was listening to the Wiz Khalifas and like the Kid Cudis and people like that talking about like like more of a positive type of drug and now people are talking about like pills and this and that and I mean because I grew up on weed music too I never smoked like I don't <coughs> smoke weed I feel like I'm not saying that everybody that listens to it is going to smoke it but it does influence you when you're younger it, it definitely influences your mind when your mind's moldable like that mm -hmm. and I feel like if we're on the radio talking about Molly Percocet and every rapper is talking about sip lean in my cup fucking pop Zan, like people are going to do that more and more and it's it's really it's killing people man I mean we got Mac Miller, Peep, who, I mean, we lost a lot of greats just, just last year, honestly. Like, it's, it's sad, man. Drugs are just taking people. Mm -hmm. When do you talk about it in your, in your album? Um, I talk about all different types of stuff in my album, honestly. I talk about, like, let's see. I talk about my youth and growing up back in the day, basically uh, uh, hustling in the system, growing up in Broward, Trying to be a little kid going to a, a, a decent school. Mm. Had a, a, I had a decent amount of money, but I was being stupid and, and trying to hustle, thinking I was, I was badass and stuff. And honestly, I, I realized that shit's not the way to go. And I try to portray in my music, or at least that one song, that you can live your own life and not have to live that way. Or you can make your own mistakes and live your own life. Mm. But I try to let people learn through me. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
that was just one song though. And I have songs about like heartbreak on there, uh, like relationship problems, fucking getting over that shit, uh, licking backwards, never looking backwards. Um, then I got, let's see, what other songs I got on here? I got, I got Glisten, which is basically about not letting the system mold you and being yourself. <coughs> um, I got With Your Looking Ass, that's all about basically people lurking and, and giving you dirty looks because you walking past puffing that gas. <laughs> uh, I got Fractify Your Mind, that's all about the different parts of your inner mind and the different types of shit you can unleash through meditation. There's all different types of topics I hit on the album, honestly. Mm. So what about like all the alien stuff? All the alien stuff. stuff. I mean, that's still tied in there, honestly. I mean, there's there's little bits and pieces you can hear about me me talking about coming down from my UFO and like where I came from, my origins. Mm -hmm. I always keep the the alien theme here and there. I mean, it's always in my music. It's deeply rooted in me. Yeah, of course. So you're having a um, you're doing an album release party too, for it, right? Yeah, this Friday, uh, November thirtieth. I don't know. Is this gonna air before then? Oh, I gotta see. It might be up after, but uh. If it airs after, you missed the party, but still check out the album. It comes out on November 29th. Um, but yeah, on the 30th, I'm going to be having a party at Naomi's Garden. I'm going to have uh, glass blowers, fire performers, uh, live music, painters, and a fashion show. Mm. So it's going to be a, a little festival out there. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. in time for Art Basel, right? Yeah, it's right before Art Basel, too. We're pretty much kicking off Art Basel. Let's say it's an Art Basel pre-party, because it's uh, about like three or four days before Art Basel actually kicks off. Mm. So like, what do you usually do during Art Basel? Uh, during Art Basel, I like to just go crazy, man. Like, I try to make it out there every single day the whole week. I know it's officially really only supposed to be like three or four days, but I go the whole week from Monday to like Sunday. Yeah. Um, I walk around up and down every every street in Wynwood, meeting random people, networking, carrying my alien around, freaking people out, <laughs> meeting like, showing people my music. I go to different galleries, different parties and bars out there. I know there's a lot of places that are like uh, art galleries that'll even have like open bars that they got free drinks. You just got to tip them and they give you drinks all night. Like, yeah. There's cool stuff out there. I mean, I love Wynwood, but I especially love Wynwood during Art Basel. Yeah, it's That's a lot of place cool. to be. Oh, and low key, I got plans for Art Basel. If you're out there, be looking for me. I got this, uh, look for the three wheeled yellow cart, but I'm going to be having a mobile stage out there. I got inspired by this dude I saw the past two years out there. Mm. Um, he had a U-Haul. And he had the back of the U-Haul opened up with a whole like DJ back there and everything. And he had a wireless mic walking behind the DJ. Mm. Um, we had a similar setup at a festival called Loveburn last year. My homie has this like yellow cart that came from like Taiwan, I think it is. Mm. It's like, it's weird, man. But uh, it's a cool ass like Taiwanese like cart that we're gonna have my DJ in the back of riding up and down every street of Wynwood while I'm just walking around with the wireless mic doing a, a show in the middle of the streets everywhere. So that's probably, I don't know what days, we're probably going to shoot for like Wednesday and Thursday. Mm. Um, but yeah, we're just going to be up and down every street and when we're doing live music, all different types of music. I got some DJs that are doing EDM and then I'll be doing my rap behind it too. Wouldn't that be hard because like all the people walking and stuff? <laughs> it would, but it also adds like the extra dope effect of like, you have a mobile crowd. Like w when I saw this dude doing it, it was the coolest thing I ever seen because he had like 30 people walking behind him. Mm -hmm. And he would just pick up more and more people on the streets of just because because Wynwood is basically bumper to bumper traffic for Art Basel. Mm -hmm. Like it's you're, you're going super slow anyways. So like he was picking up random people walking in between cars that would just come up and join the crowd and his crowd would just be building and building bigger and bigger. It was pretty cool, man. Like mm -hmm. I just I want to accomplish something like that. I, it would be a lot of fun to, to do that myself because nah. it was cool to just interact with him doing it. I always thought of like setting up a table where I could like put my art and sell it. Oh yeah, you can Isn't definitely like do that too. I met, um, actually a few of the coolest artists I follow on Instagram, I met that way. That they were just sitting out there like on random, like a couple rocks or something with their shirts and hats out, or they have a table set up with their art on it. Like, I met a bunch of cool people like that. You can definitely sell your art out there. Mm. No, yeah. That's cool, yeah. How often do you go to one with, um, outside of our Basel? Um, I live all the way out in Broward, but I go to Wynwood probably like at least three times a month, but I would say more than that because sometimes it's like once a week. Hmm. Um, this last week alone, I went to Miami like four times and every time I go to Miami, I stop in Wynwood at least for a little bit. 
Mm. So like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm out here all the time. Miami's my second home. I think we talked about in the last interview, like my mom grew up in Miami all her life and was like partying all around Miami. So like, even though I wasn't born here or like You're raised here and stuff, I feel like like my heart belongs in Miami. All the party scene is like where I belong at. And I feel like the music scene out here, I mean, Broward's got a pretty hard music scene, but most of them come out here for shows anyways. I feel like Miami's really got the big music scene. No, yeah. How do you feel like um, about like X passing too? Oh man, that's that's really sad. Honestly, like I can't Come even. Come closer to the mic. Right, my bad. Um, yeah, that's that's really sad. It kind of it hit me. I can't even like fake like I was the biggest X fan before it happened. But um, yeah, I mean, I I feel like after it happened, it really opened my uh, my eyes to a lot more of his music, and and it, he really was a talented young man, dude. From out here, like local fucking made that shit and he i mean he was noticed by a lot of a lot of people man he had all all the greatest in the fucking game looking at him so like i mean he he made it far he did what he wanted to do he he lived a great life but i, I feel bad that he couldn't have you know like why do you, why lived do you it think, out further why do you think that artists get bigger when they die <clears throat> i don't know man like I don't even know how to answer why people love you more when you die. I mean, it's it's the sad truth, but I mean, and, and it's not even just like artists too. A lot of the times, like people just don't appreciate you until you're gone. And mm -hmm. like, I don't know, man. I don't. But it's it's definitely a known fact that happens to a lot of people. Like, what about like when you're in jail? Like when artists go to jail, they get a lot bigger too. Yeah, it's honestly. I feel like you don't even have to die. It's like. People don't appreciate what they have until it's gone. It's and it's not just with artists either. Like it's like people in relationships or people with friendships or people with like a lot of times people don't appreciate like what they have in front of them until like they miss it. Once it's but gone, they're just like, oh shit, like I then they lie. start paying attention like to about it. Like Miller, yeah. a lot of people weren't really listening to him, you know, right before he died. And that's but the sad like part, dude. I, I was. I've always been a diehard fan since like like high school and like I have his last CD that came out. I have it in my car out there. I have Good AM in my car out there. Um, I, I listen to him every single day, man. And he's been an artist that like really like molded me and like really inspired me from day one. Before I even thought of like music as like a thing, he, he was just there inspiring me, man. <clears throat> but yeah, this last album, I mean, talked a lot about like the struggles he was going through not only with like like the drugs, the relationship, the music business, like he talked about a lot of the struggles he was in and like he really had his head underwater and shit and that's why his album was called Swimming because he was just basically maintaining like swimming through the bullshit but mm. barely getting by and it's it's sad but I mean this this music industry takes a lot of artists and it's not I mean it's it's depression, it's drugs, it's it's a lot of things that like comes with the territory honestly that that hit people, bro. But yeah, I don't, I don't know why people weren't appreciating him as much before he died. But I had four tickets I bought for the album that was, I mean, for the the concert that was supposed to be. I think it was supposed to be the 16th of this month. It was gonna be like last week. Mm. Um, but yeah, that those tickets came with a copy of his album. So I got like four copies of the album with those four tickets, and I gave it to some of my closest friends to listen to him. But yeah, man, I was, I was listening to that album every single day before he passed. I was listening to the album when I found out he passed. Really? Uh, yeah, and that shit hit me hard, dude. Like, I was on my way to go pick up my girlfriend at the time, who was like just as big of a fan of him as I was, and like, I'm like driving her to her house up here in Kendall, uh, or down here in Kendall, and um, on my way there, like, I'm listening to the album, and my mom calls me, and she's like, "Did you hear who passed away?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And she's like, she explained it to me, and I started freaking out, dude. Like, that shit, mm -hmm. it hit us hard, man. Uh, it really hit us hard, and. I don't know why people didn't appreciate him as much before he passed, but that's a talented artist, man. I've listened to his whole catalog, and like, there's not a song by him I don't like. Like, some of his songs are extremely serious and can get really deep about like the mind or depression or, or different kind of things, and then some of them are just joke out like joke songs, and it's like, what the fuck is he talking about? But they're all still entertaining, and they're all still like gold. Any part of it, bro. Like, Mac Miller was definitely a musical like legend. How do you feel about Ariana Grande? <coughs> I don't even know what to say, man, because I don't know who might see this one day or what, like, what, I don't know, but I don't want to put her to blame for anything, but at the same time, like, what she did to him was fucked up. Like, Why would she do that? Whole, the, the whole breakup, you know much about the breakup or much about what, who she was with him and anything? You don't know about, oh, damn. <coughs> so basically, um, I don't like to speak negative on Ariana. No, I feel you, I feel you. 
I don't really want to talk down on her either, but like, I mean, yeah, I don't know. She, she basically, you know about when they broke up, she left him for the other dude, right? She left him for Pete, and like, they got engaged like two weeks after the breakup or some shit. She got engaged to somebody else. Like, that breaks somebody mentally, man. That can, that can really fuck somebody up. Mm. Like, you don't, you don't just do that to someone, man. That's, I don't know. Like breaking up with them? Well, no, nah, the fact that she broke up with him and got engaged with somebody else two, like two weeks later. That means she was definitely seeing that dude behind his back, not fucking talking about that shit. And she's had a history of that, too. That's Ariana Grande, man. Like, she be hopping from, from rapper to rapper to rapper behind their backs, bro. Like, she, you gotta realize she went from Sean to Mac, back to Sean. <laughs> that, like, she was going back and forth, and, like, she, she just... I mean, I won't lie, like, you know... I'm pretty sure Mac was like with other girls, like on tour and stuff, you know. Prob- I don't know. That, yeah, like, it happens to a lot of rappers. <laughs> like not just Mac, but like every, no, pretty much I, every I rapper is getting that. girls on the tours. I feel that. I don't. I don't really know the situation, so I can't really really talk on them. But I know like the the shit she did like definitely hurt him, and the fact that she went on. She um. I know that that hurt him, and the fact that she went and like bashed him after too. Did you know about? After the breakup, he went and crashed his G-Wagon. You know about that, right? Yeah, bro. He he was going through a rough patch the last two months be, before he passed, dude. Um, yeah, she fucking... She left him and got engaged with this other dude. So Mac was drunk and ended up crashing his G-Wagon mm-hmm. um, with his homies <laughs> in it. And him and his homies got out and ran to his house. Like, they hit a, he hit a fucking telephone pole or some shit, and he got out and ran all the way home. And the cops came to his house because they found his car there, just ditched there. So they came mm-hmm. to his house and they were like, what the fuck? And he turned himself in, went to jail, got bailed right out. Um, but yeah, but like he, he was going through a rough time. And that shit had just happened, like, like I think two months before he passed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then uh, when that happened, she went online and bashed him about being a drug addict most of the relationship and bashed him about this. And, and I understand yeah, if he's a drug addict too. and you, like... I understand like how that that was bothering her, but you don't go and bash them online for that, bro. If you think that they they're hurting and they really need that help and they're really depressed or really doing like bad on drugs and shit, go get them the help. I mean, it's, you're both celebrities. You guys have money to go get the professional help that you need. If you think he needs to get clean off drugs, don't go and post on Twitter for all of his fans and your fans saying, "Oh, he does drugs. He does this and that." And he's he's already in a bad mental state himself and everything. So, um, I don't know, that, that whole thing was just really messed up, but, um, yeah, I don't know, I, I still, I don't have anything against her, and I'm not gonna put her to blame, I just know that that whole situation was fucked up, and, mm-hmm. it, but sometimes with breakups, we don't really know both sides, we don't know what happened, who, who did what, what really went down behind the scenes, especially because they're celebrities, man, that, their lives are super, well, sometimes private, sometimes not, but, I mean, you don't know what happens behind closed doors, so we can't really speak too much on that. No, yeah, of course. So, what about um, let's talk about like shows and stuff. Like, you have any shows planned up? <coughs> um, well, yeah, basically, almost every month I do a show called Spirit of Sound Gathering. Mm. Um, it's mostly EDM artists and stuff. It's a show hosted by one of my homies. Um, but I do my my thing. I have like an hour or so. I do hip hop. I get a couple other artists doing hip hop too. Mm. Um. That's also at Naomi's Garden, the same place that I'm doing the, the release party at. It's mm-hmm. over in uh, Little Haiti. It's like 10 minutes away from, from Wynwood. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I got that show coming up. Um, every couple weeks, I go over to Miami Live and do a show over there. You know about the Miami Live shows? No. Nah, they have a dope little setup over there that like uh, you can sign up online, and they send you tickets and shit, and you like sell them or give them out to people. You sell them or give them out to people, and... Um, Basically, I mean, it's a nice venue. They got a nice stage, a bar set up and everything. They have a there, studio built in there. There's usually a lot of people in there? Yeah. It's usually pretty packed out. There's usually a couple hundred in there. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, the, the album release party this Friday on the 30th. Um, what other shows? I know my homie's trying to book me. I might do New Year's out in, um, where did he tell me? I think it's in, like, Fort Myers. Mm. Um my homie's trying to book me for New Year's, but I'm I'm trying to keep that option open because you never know. I mean, I've, I'm trying to find a mansion party out here in Miami or something I can like rock the stage on or something. Yeah. But I might I might be going to doing that show if all else fails. Um, January, early January, we're setting up a tour. Me and this, uh, me and my homie Tags 
are setting up a tour for basically all of Florida. We're gonna hit like the whole fucking panhandle, bro. We're gonna go mm-hmm. from like bottom to top, every city we can like, get booked in. Mm-hmm. Um, we have like six or seven different like locations we're working on right now, but we're trying to add as much as possible. We're gonna do like the whole month of January just in our own state and then see where it branches from there, honestly. Mm-hmm. Hopefully next year starts the, the beginning of touring a bunch more because I really want to start getting more outside of the state booking dates because, like, <laughs> I love my people around here and stuff, but I feel like I need to, to branch out more and do more shows outside and expand. No, yeah. What, what are you doing to get more fans? Um, there's a couple different things I've been doing. Um, mostly working the magic that this one brings along. <laughs> Yeah, she she helps me manifest some fans. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just doing a lot of more promoting on on Instagram. I've been getting some help by this uh, this radio show that's been working with me. Mm-hmm. That's sort of helping me build a little bit of a following. Um, yeah, I'm just honestly networking is wherever I go is is always working, bro. I'm always networking. I always got my alien with me. I always got cards with me, mm-hmm. trying to talk about my music and my clothing. So I just I'm trying to spread the spread the word by word of mouth and like hand to hand giving people my stuff logging in my Instagram like following myself on their phones and stuff you know oh, yeah. usually this this thing's a great magnet for, for attention and for followers bro because right. everybody's running up and like asking to take pictures or asking what it's about why I have yeah. an alien with me so I mean it's a, it's an icebreaker it you helps feel me like self conscious about holding like walking around with it um I used to be honestly but I mean honestly when I was carrying it around it, it helped me not be self-conscious at one point like sometimes when i don't have it i feel weird like not anymore because i'm more feeling myself these days but before i used to have to hide behind it sometimes like right. i would walk around with it like this and i don't know what about like when cops would see it and stuff Did oh i mean care? cops still don't really mess with me i feel like they're just freaked out by it like Man. i've only had really like one time that they really fucked with me about it but like I was getting pulled over and it was like laying in the back seat and they like freaked out thinking I had like a person laying back there or something. Right yeah. I mean, it looks like a, like a really little person. Mm-hmm. It's got like legs sticking out and shit. <laughs> why, why, yeah. does, why does it have a dress? Oh, I don't know. I mean, she, she just told me she wanted to twist up one day so we went out and we got her her thing. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. You ever feel like um, you're gonna like switch up like your persona and like do something else? Um. I don't know. I don't think I'd ever switch up my persona. I like I like doing what I do. I like me. I like my aliens. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like I like what I do. I don't know. I I probably wouldn't switch up my persona unless I uh I got that that two hundred million dollar deal. I'm looking at you, whoever's whoever's looking at me. <laughs> no, but I'm just fucking. I don't even. I wouldn't change myself up even for a deal. Honestly, I want to be myself no matter what. I always told myself too that like. I, and this is the reason why I'm trying to start my, my own label and do this kind of on my own because I always said that like, I don't care if I have like like 50 fans or like 500,000 fans. Like as long as I have those people out there that can like listen to my music and relate to it mm-hmm. or like feel my music when I make it, like that's all that really matters is, is the real fans that feel it here instead of the ones that just like nod their head mindlessly and not really listen. I mean, there's, there's I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I was getting with that. Nah, right, for you. What about like, um, you know, like other artists that you like trying to work with? Um, artists that I'm trying to work with. All right, um, I'm gonna throw these out there. I would definitely want to work with Alex Wiley. Um, I definitely want to work with Jid J I D. He's fucking dope. Uh, Earth Gang. Um, who else would I want to work with, man? There's a lot of rappers out here. Underachievers, that's been a dream to work with for a long time. I would love to work with the Underachievers, the Flapper Zombies. Um, yeah, man. It would be, be dope. Probably Joey Badass, too. Oh, yeah. I, w- I wish I could say Capital Steve's, but like, rest in peace, man. That's, that's who really got me into this like conscious hip-hop and like, yeah, kind of hip-hop with a different wave. Yeah, rest in peace, Capital Steve's. What about like artists you see coming up in like Miami right now? Artists I see coming up in Miami. All right, um, I got some people like uh, my homie Trip Suave and his producer mm-hmm. Abductee. He also raps. They're both dope. Uh, who else can I say, man? I got a bunch of people honestly that I'd be fucking with. That's dope. Uh, Febo the Truth is dope. Um, damn, I don't want to be leaving people out and having people mad at me and shit, but. 
You know, I don't, I don't know. There's a few people that I think are running Miami and doing their thing. Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> those are those are a few that I'd be fucking with right now. What about you? Who are you fucking with right now that's coming up? I'm out of here. I don't know. I don't really listen to too many. Like, I mean, I like the only people from Miami I listen to all is like Icy Narco and like Trap Star. I feel you. That's pretty much. I feel you. Yeah, my homie actually, you know, I fuck with one of my day ones. He's he's from Broward though, but uh Oh yeah, and Lil Slump too. I fuck my with homie, Slump. My homie Matt Fuse, he has a song with Icy Narco. Oh, yeah. Uh you know Fuse? That's my oh yeah, boy. I think you, you interviewed Fuse, bro. I've I've known him since like the rave days, bro. I've known him since like I was fifteen and he was probably like <laughs> like thirteen, bro. Like we were young, bro. Like No, nah, Matt's hard. Yeah, he's, he's fire. Stuff. He's always he's always been fire too though, bro. But like he's he's recently like really finding his style, finding his wave, finding his like his, Yeah, bro, he has a team behind him, so he's like he's yeah. definitely legit. I fucks with his wave, bro. And his his style, not not even just the music, bro, but like his clothes and shit and the fuck everything he's doing now is like fire, yeah. bro. Like he like I remember when I first knew him and stuff, like he was first like finding himself and shit. But like he's he's really unfolding now as an artist. I feel like a lot of us now are like growing, bro. Like we're finally starting to to sprout out into what we need to grow into. No, yeah, no, of course. Um, what about like if someone's gonna listen to your album? What's like the first like song that they should listen to? to the like, first song. Into? Well, I would listen to it the the whole way through. Honestly, it's a twelve album song. I mean, a twelve song album. And it's about like like forty forty five minutes long. So I mean, it's not even it's not that long of an album, but it's got a lot of content in mm. that that album. So I would say listen to it all the way through. I mean, it's a it's a story beginning to end. The the first song is an intro and everything, and it's called "You Have Arrived," and it's all about like landing down on the mothership and kind of arriving in this whole new world of of your mind. Mm. And I don't know, man. I, I would listen to it in a, in order. I just realized, like, yeah, I remember your logo is like the ETA is yeah. like the 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 ohm symbol. Yeah. Yeah, my logo is a, a take of the ohm symbol. Um, it, it represents a, a lot of it's like peace and tranquility, and it, it's it's helped me a lot in my life, honestly. It's through through learning meditation and learning about the ohm and about the flower of life, and like I don't know, I've just. I feel like you can you can learn a lot from these things. No, yeah, of course. Um, what about like any art? Um, any advice that you want to give out to anyone starting up right now? Advice to anyone starting up. Um, just do your own thing. Do you no matter what. Um, don't care what people say. There's gonna be haters no matter what. There's gonna be like fucking twenty of you on this video like in the first couple of days. I don't give a fuck. Like you just gotta keep doing you no matter what, man. There's haters everywhere, but there's also fucking supporters everywhere. And the weird thing is, as shitty as it is to say, man, a lot of the times, the supporters are the ones that are going to stay quiet. The people that fuck with you, the people that are really liking what you're doing, mm. a lot of the times, they're not the ones that, that put the energy into, for some reason, I don't know why, but they're not the ones that actually put the energy into, like, commenting or fucking talking, like, saying different things. But a lot of the times, the haters will fucking spend their whole fucking day writing fucking paragraphs. It's like, how do people even have that much time to spread that much hate? Yeah. But I feel like there's there's a lot more hate online than there is love for some reason. Like but I, I feel like that doesn't quite mean that there aren't people that love you out there or are fucking with it out there. They're just more quiet for some reason. A lot mm. of times they're just the more quiet ones. But yeah, my advice would just be keep doing you no matter what. Don't care what people say. Like haters are, are gonna be everywhere, man. You nah, just gotta of keep course. doing you. What about like anyone you wanna shout out? Anyone I wanna shout out. All right, Dark South, them my homies. Um, shit, who else, man? We got Abductee, Trip Suave, um, Edwin at Forever Current Studios, uh, my mama, hi mom. <laughs> um, yeah, my album Sagittarian Samurai, my alter ego, um, my alien. Yeah, I'd like to thank all the beings that brought me here. Thank the universe. Mm -hmm. Thank. Uh, I won't say God because I don't specifically call it God, but I call it the creator of the universe or thank whatever put us here, honestly, because no matter what you believe in, it gets you by and it's making you be you. So, I mean, thank, thank everything out there. And nah, thank nah. all of you watching this. Thank my fans. Nah, of thank course. you for having me. <laughs> and where can they find you at? Oh, y'all can find me uh, 
you can find me on Instagram, SoundCloud, any of that stuff. But now this album is going to be on iTunes, Spotify, all that kind of stuff. So look up Sagittarian Samurai or just look up my name, Toast of the Terrestrial. You can find my music videos on YouTube, uh, Instagram at The Real Toasted. Uh, same thing for the SoundCloud, SoundCloud backslash The Real Toasted. Uh, yeah, Toast of the Terrestrial, AT Alliance Records, Extraterrestrial Alliance. For sure. So it's been six feet. Wait, Toasted, toasted the Terrestrial. Hey. hey.